Hey guys, welcome. This is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and this video is the first in what I hope will be a series of 51 videos that coincide with Ply Magazine's 51 Yarns Spin Along that they're running on Instagram at the moment. For those of you who haven't come across it, um, Ply Magazine are doing a different topic every week for 51 weeks. It's to coincide with the book that they just released, which is their very first book. Every topic is listed on their website as well. So if you haven't got your copy of the book yet, you can go onto their website and you can see what the topics are for each week. And my plan is to do a video each week that corresponds with that topic in some way. Sometimes it will actually be me spinning that particular type of yarn, but then some of the topics are not to do with a specific type of yarn, but to do with an experience. So some of them will just be me talking about that experience. If you do take part in the Instagram spin along, there is an opportunity to win a year's subscription to Ply Magazine every single week that they are running that spin along. Um, if you haven't had a look at Ply Magazine yet, it is an amazing resource. It's kind of like getting all of the world's best spinning teachers at the moment, sitting them in a room and getting them to talk about a particular topic. And it's just such a fabulous resource. I am not sponsored by or affiliated to Ply Magazine in any way, shape or form. I just find it a really useful resource. So I just highly encourage people to go and have a little look at it. So this is hopefully the start of those 51 videos and I will dive straight into the first week's topic, which is your default yarn. And I thought this was gonna be really easy because my instant reaction was, well, of course my default yarn is a two ply worsted spun and turns out it isn't. <laughs> it turns out that I kind of stopped doing that as my default yarn probably a year or two ago. When they say default yarn, what I really think about is just the kind of comforting spin where you can just sit down and spin and not really have to think about it. Exactly as I'm doing now, I'm talking to you and thinking about all of the recording devices and everything else that I want to say. And I'm just sitting here and spinning and I'm not really thinking about it. I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some different yarns, yarns that I've picked out of my stash, which I think represent how my default yarn has changed from being a beginner to being a few years down the road in the uh, spinning journey. And I'll go through them and you can see how my default style has changed. Everybody's default style changes as you get more experienced with spinning. So when you're a beginner, it's very likely that you're gonna produce fairly big, thick yarns like this one. This was Shetland and it would have been from Shetland top. It's really nice and squishy. It's a perfectly usable yarn. I have used a lot of it, but it's kind of a bit thick and thin. It's pretty chunky. And this was a two ply and it would have been a worsted spin. So you can see it's a fairly chunky yarn. And that's great, and I have used it. Totally usable yarn, um, but it's not something that I would use a massive amount of. And also as your spinning style develops, you learn to control your diameter a lot more. It's a really common thing to start with something really chunky, and then your fingers get used to manipulating the fiber and your feet get used to treadling the wheel and you find your yarn getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And before you know where you are, you're at this stage where you're spinning a default yarn, which is kind of heavy lace weight. And that's great, but I don't use a lot of heavy lace weight yarn. In fact, pretty much none. So. This fibre was a gift from Kate Heppel, who's now editor of Knit Now magazine because she got locked out of her car while trying to put her spinning wheel back in it after we'd been to a spinning event at my local yarn shop at the time. So she was dyeing fibre and she gave me some. So this is where that came from. Thank you, Kate. 
Um, but as I say, it's heavy lace weight and I'm sure I will find a use for it at some point. But I started to realise somewhere around about this time that I needed to start spinning default yarns that were actually going to be ones that I would use. So I began to spin three ply of some description. And that's where this next one comes in. So this one is a chain plied. You might know it as Navajo plying. It's chain plied. It's from my own hand dyed fibre and it comes out at roughly fingering weight, which is something that I would use a lot. I use a lot of sock weight or fingering weight yarns and it's fairly high twist as well. I do quite like a good high twist yarn. So that is something that I would definitely, definitely use. And that's part of the whole purposeful and intentional spinning journey that I'm on. If you haven't watched the entire series of the podcast, and it's quite a lot of viewing, so I, I wouldn't blame you if you hadn't. Um, my journey really is about being a little bit more purposeful with the yarn that I spin so that I don't end up in a situation where I have just tons of yarn that I'm never going to use. The next one that I've picked out is probably what I spin most of, which is a relatively solid or semi-solid yarn. It's a traditional three ply. Um, this was BFL and I used it for the political process mitts that I knitted round about episode two or three of the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast. It's a lovely yarn. Those mittens are holding up very, very well. Um, it's not quite as high twist as the chain plied one that I showed you a moment ago, but it's very common for me to spin yarns like this. Uh, it was the same with the yarn that I spun for the Elune Macau. Um, that was also a three ply and a solid colour. So because it's very common for me to knit with solid colours, I do tend to spin quite a lot of solid colours as well. So that is a fairly standard yarn for me now. And again, that's roughly fingering weight. And then the final yarn that I picked out just because it's kind of fun and it's what I wanted to use in my Instagram posts for this week's spin along is this one. This one comes from a series of bats by a company called Nanoko. I'll put their uh, Etsy shop in the description. And basically you can get packs of three bats. They don't do them all the time, but you can sometimes get packs of three bats that all have a kind of colour connection between them. And this particular set of bats that I ordered was three bats, all with kind of greens, kind of greeny, yellowy, turquoisey colours. There's some Stellina in there, there's some little silk neps, there's all sorts of random bits and bobs. But because each of the bats also had a gradient in it, so it went from dark to light, I stripped the bats so that I was spinning from the dark end through to the light end or vice versa. And then I just plied them all together in a traditional three ply. But it meant that I got a nice gradient yarn. So it goes from I've got dark over this side and it goes through to lighter colours over this side, which is just gorgeous. And I love it. And it's just kind of a fun skein. Um, I haven't found a good pattern for this yet. So if you can think of a good pattern that uses a relatively small amount of gradient yarn, maybe mixed in with something else, then give me a shout. I would love to know. So there we go. That is how my default yarn has changed over the last few years. I would love to know what your default yarn is. Also, if you're on Instagram and I'm not following you, let me know what your Instagram handle is and I will go over there and give you a follow. I hope that this has inspired you to have a look at the 51 Yarns Challenge. As I said, all of the information is in the description below, so you can click through to Ply Magazine's website, have a look at the topics, and hopefully I will see you in the spin along. I hope this video has been useful and I will see you again in the next one.